Hey, it's Bridget. I wanted to talk to you about some spooky stuff. All right, so I'm gonna share with you some scary things that have happened to me or that spooked me out or freaked me out in doing my psychic and intuitive work. So I'm gonna do a series of a couple of different videos to share some of these stories with you because I got a lot of them. All right, okay, so the first thing is, as I'll share when I was channeling, okay, some uh, uh, one really strange thing that happened to me when I was channeling, you could say maybe channeling all the time is just strange anyway, but one thing that happened when I was channeling was I was doing on Above Life channel, I was doing a video channeling Beth Chapman, Beth Chapman. She was a reality TV show. She was on a reality TV show. She died of cancer and there was a lot of, I think they rest, or did they, bounty hunter stuff. Like her husband was like a bounty hunter and I think she was too. And so I was channeling her and I was in my kitchen, which is where I used to, and I usually, I really like to work in my kitchen. It just feels like nice and centered there and connected. And I was like, nobody else was home. And all of a sudden it's like, it sounded like um, something hit the refrigerator. So it was like a, it's a stainless steel refrigerator. It sounded like something like metal hit it like a rock or something like just hit the refrigerator and it like made this big noise. And I was like, I was startled. And it actually showed up on the video. Again, that's a video with Beth Chapman channeling her at Above Life Channel. So that scared me. Like it, it made me jump, it, it freaked me out. Okay, so that was one of my little kind of weird freaky things that happened when I was channeling. So some other things that I would share with you that are kind of scary um, or have been scary for me anyway, or have felt, um, and let me just clarify too what I mean by scary. It means like that makes you jump, that makes me jump or freaks me out or makes me go, okay, I'm done, <laughs> not doing this anymore. I've never felt like I was at risk or could be harmed or that my life was in danger or anything like that. I don't believe that I've, I've felt like any kind of threat from any kind of a spirit or anything like that in the past several years i have not felt like that i i do take i go to um i take measures to manage energy in my home and around me and doing the work that i do i understand that you traverse different levels of spirit and have different types of connections with different a variety of spirits whether it be in a private session with you and maybe I'm talking to someone who um, perpetrated some kind of a crime. And I have, I've talked with people who've um, not been the best of people in their human life, but in session with you in order to kind of come to terms with what happened, um, you uh, will ask for me to do that, to kind of be that um, bridge for you. And so we kind of have this conversation. And so I felt that I've worked with in areas where there are spirits that are creepy. Like if you bumped into them as a person, you would just not want to bump into them as a person. But I've always felt very safe for the most part, okay? I've always felt very safe because I take measures to make sure that that's the case. And so I have had some scary moments where I, I don't know if I'd say it was like scary, like, oh my God, you know, but moments where I felt a lot of, I don't want to say evil, that's not the right word, but a lot of really dark energy, let's say that. I felt really dark energy and feeling as though a spirit was kind of trying to manipulate me a little bit, like work the energy so that I would focus on this part of his life and not look over here. And I could feel that and I knew that. And yet I know my work at Above Life Channel, especially, I just, I don't wanna go into these dark areas where there's enough of that on the internet, okay? There's enough um, hearse chasing mediums that channel really dramatic, traumatic events or crime stuff and unsolved murders and all that. And that that's a niche. And 
that works for some people. That's not my interest and I don't like it. I, I don't like that stuff. I don't want to specialize in it. That's scary. That's really scary to me. And yet I've had experience with, especially there's one celebrity in the afterlife that I can tell you that I connected with that he was very, he wasn't even that smooth, let me just be honest. More childlike than smooth, I would say, that wanted me to focus on this side and kept like like complimenting me and trying to get me to focus on this and almost like feel bad for him. And then yet I was like, look, I know that this part exists and I'm okay with just talking about this part, but I'm gonna let you know, here's how it's going down. I know about this, but I will focus on this, but I'm going to be true and authentic when I focus on this. Okay. And so I have had a couple sessions with him and I had another one that I did that I did talk about this. And I said, look, here's the deal. If we want to keep, if we want to keep connecting, your people are crazy. Your fans are crazy and I know they're going to be very mad at me if I focus on this, but that's the part of the integrity of my work. I do want to allow my own feelings and my own opinions to be honored as well when I'm doing channeling. When I am doing channeling intentionally, I will tell you that I am bringing my own opinions, my own views intentionally in saying, I want to share this part because this is an important part of this, okay, of the whole. So that was creepy to me because to feel this stuff, I could feel it. Like I knew, I'm like, okay, I know this happened. <laughs> and how do I share this? There's no delicate, it's how you be delicate and in the big picture of things. I mean, it's just, it, it was yucky. It was, it was very dark and is bad. To me, it was bad. It was worse than murder. It was bad. So let me see. Um, in regards to channeling, if there's other people, I have talked to murderers. I'm going to say that. I haven't shared publicly. Um, I reached out to the, how do I say this without revealing who it is exactly? Oh my gosh. I could get so, let me just say this. I could get so many views. I could get so many views on my channel if I would just channel this person and put it out there, but I'm not going to do that. And because I have respect for this person's next of kin so much that I reached out to this person, I reached out to their next of kin, wrote a letter um, in two different ways to get it to this person to make sure that it would get to the right place. And that person responded back to me. Yes. And that person shared, was very kind, exactly how I felt that person to be, the human that, I, that is here <laughs> in this plane. She, she's here now, she lives, exists now. I just gave a part of it, I guess, peace. She responded back to me and she's very kind and she's on her own healing journey. And I totally understand it. I have a lot of respect for her. I don't know how she's done it. And I offered to channel for her to connect and be a communication bridge, which I'm sure many other Yahoo way who crazy people and legitimate people probably also have. And, and she politely declined the offer, but she was very kind to me. And I thought, wow, that's exactly how her um, afterlife um, person said she'd be. So. But yes, I have um, communicated with murderers, not intentionally, let me just say that, not intentionally. And what do I mean by that? It, I mean, it's not like they come to me and they go, hey, Bridget, hey, Bridget, can you talk to me? Hey, it's not like I'm at the spiritual bar. Hey, hey, you wanna channel me? Hey, you know, it doesn't work like that. Not for me, anyway. I was, um, it was, I'm trying to remember how I came across it. It came a couple of years ago, about a year and a half. No, it was about a year and a half ago. So would that have been the anniversary? That might have been an anniversary. It might have been a time where the information about um, the murder was present and maybe I heard it on the news or I saw it on a YouTube feed or something and something connected for me and I opened my heart. I was just like, 
oh, and I felt a tremendous amount of empathy for the murderer. And that's a weird situation to be in, and that's not a popular opinion or view. And yet I felt a tremendous amount of empathy, and as well as for the victim. But it was, it was surprise. it caught me off guard to feel that much. And so I had a conversation with the spirit a bit, and that's when I reached out to the woman and the next of kin. And uh, so, but that, I wouldn't say that was creepy, but it was, yeah, it was scary because it was scary for me on a personal level because I've never really just had some, like a connection with the spirit and then reached out to the person and said, hey, I'm talking to your so-and-so. Would you like to talk to your so-and-so? And I haven't done that. So that was, that was scary for me because, you know, you're like, oh, this person's going to think I'm crazy and I'm some hearse chaser just trying to get attention or whatever. And I was like, I'll sign any NDAs. I'll sign any non-disclosures. I'll, you can have your attorney give me something. I will sign it. This is not, I don't want it on my Facebook, my YouTube, nothing. I want to do it for you for this afterlife spirit that I've had a conversation with and was very, um, touched, by, I was moved by talking with the spirit. I learned a lot actually, so, and I can feel the energy a little bit away kind of watching me and just smiling right now in a soft way, not creepy way, soft way. So there's that. Um, as far as channeling, let me see if there's anybody, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else that I've talked to that, or if I've had any, like weird experiences like paranormal like where something happens in my physical experience during a channeling session let me think about that oh hmm. so for a while when i was channeling prince in the afterlife a lot like i channeled prince a lot and i worked as the purple medium for a while kind of incognito like people didn't know who i was <laughs> and it's so weird like i was working as a psychic as a medium as a psychic coach and I was concerned that my current clients would think it was weird that I was channeling an afterlife celebrity. So I like did it incognito, you know, anonymously for a while. And then after like six months, maybe it was less than a year, I think, that I kind of said, hey, this is who, I, you know, I told the people that were starting to follow me as the purple medium. This is who I am. This is what I do. And I just kind of blended it all together. But so earlier on when I started channeling Prince, that happened in 2016 um, in the spring after his passing. And I live in Minnesota, so and I live about 45 minutes from Paisley Park Studio. So it's I think it must have been a geographic thing because I was not a Prince fan. If you've watched my Above Life channel for any length of time, you know that I was a MJ fan. <laughs> now I'm a I'm I'm definitely uh, open to all good music, music and musicians, regardless of who they are, who they were in the, <laughs> their human life. Okay, let's just be clear. I can't play favorites anymore, people. I can't play favorites. So, although I do, I do play favorites. Let's be honest. I have some favorites. But anyway, anyway, the point is, the point is, um, a couple of years after I started channeling with Prince, I started getting this like impulse to channel in a different way like to share energy with that person and see if that person could come into like my aura my energy space in front of my body not in my body but share this like etheric field inside the aura this there's this kind of space called the etheric field have them be in that space and kind of be the projected energy of them but use my body as far as uh mannerisms uh, vocal tone uh, posture that kind of a thing so i kind of my body would respond as a human to the energy that i was feeling in front of me but it wasn't inside me and i called that transformative channeling transformative channeling or trans t-r-a-n-s channeling because it wasn't like a human and it wasn't like a spirit it was like a shared experience right so that's the term transformate transformative channeling or trans channeling and so I started doing that with Prince and it was cool it was weird but it was cool and one of the times that I connected with him he brought this guitar in 
he was like playing with his guitar and I could feel it and I literally felt it. And so my husband who had the same type or a guitar that was kind of like that, um, he grabbed it, he had it. My husband had it, I didn't know. Like we knew that we were gonna channel with Prince and I was gonna do a transformative channel which I always close my eyes when I do those. And uh, so he knew that and my husband was there because he always kind of helps me out because he was like a grounded, grounded energy for me. So I'd reach out to him and touch his knee or I'd be like, okay, I need help coming out. And he would touch my hand and I would be like, shoom, into my body, fully on my body, like, hey, I'm here, everything's great. Cause it would kind of be like, I'd go to sleep a little bit kind of, but so that my body could respond to the energy without my mind like controlling anything. So he um, had brought this little prop up, this guitar that he brought up. And during the channeling session, and I had no idea. I did not know it was there. I didn't know. And during the channeling session, like Prince was talking about his guitar, and he was like talking about it like it was a woman and how incredible it was. And I was just like, okay, creepy dude, you know? I'm <laughs> like, Prince is very different, eclectic. And in the afterlife, when he channels in a way that's more human, bringing his human persona in, he gets a little eclectic and kind of uh, uh, out there for me, okay? And so, and he's an artist, so hey, he's expressive. And so my husband put that into my hand when I was trans channeling and I was like, oh, like he, like my whole body grabbed that thing and it was like, oh my gosh, and it was such a gift. And my husband had been doing these transformative channels with me and Prince and around with me and when I was have been doing channeling and work with Prince that they, the two of them kind of had this camaraderie. And so it was like a kind of a nod from my husband to Prince and Prince loved it. He was all over it. Again, that one, um, it's a channeling session on the playlist for Prince at Above Life Channel and it's about his guitar. So it was, it was cool. That was weird though. It was so weird. It was so weird. And people were like, well, why don't you play it? I'm like, what, what do you mean? The artist only has what's available i am not a musician so how could i be like just all of a sudden like i don't have that muscle memory in me so how could i do that you know <laughs> excuse me it's like saying well can't you sing when when a, a musician comes in into you or you're in, in you know with in that kind of intimate space with a spirit in the afterlife that's a musician why can't you just sing like they do i'm like because they have my voice. It's my voice still. It's still in my body. It's mine. That's where the bias comes in. That's where our own take on spiritual connection, communication, messages, and presentation come in. It's they can only use what they can only use, which is this body. Okay, you guys? Okay. So, so let me see if there's anything else creepy. Oh, my nose is itchy. Anything else creepy that I can talk about? Oh, I have done, I did a channeling of Phil Hartman. This was kind of icky, yucky. Um, and I have seen death scenes that are really yucky, like gory and just gory, graphic and gory. And I just, I can't even, like it's hard to, why would I articulate all that? It's just so intense emotionally for me. And I like, I don't even like blood, you guys. Like, so one of my kids, was going down the driveway when he was like six years old on a bike and it's gravelly and he flipped the bike and stuck the the um, handlebar, the brake part, right through his cheek. And there was a big hole in his cheek and it was gapping, it was open and it was disgusting. There's fleshy and it was, oh my gosh. And so I'm like, ah, like I can't. <laughs> I freak out, like I can't do the blood thing. I'm like, oh my God, just cover it up, cover it up. I'm like, oh. Instinctively, I'm like, use your shirt, just put it on your face, put it on your face. And I'm like screaming for my husband and my, my younger son was there. I'm like, go get him, go get my husband, go get so-and-so, go get your dad, go get your Oh my God. <laughs> so it would make sense that I wouldn't be into that, right? So I've seen really graphic scenes. Um, when I did the Phil Hartman channeling session, I saw that. And that was icky, that was yuck. 
Um, that was hard. Whenever somebody shot in the head, the face, the neck, I mean, and there's a lot, I mean, and, and there's damage to the body, like obvious damage to the body, it's, it was, it's, it's hard. And I do see, remember, because I'm clairvoyant, so that was icky, that was like, ugh, yuck. And I'm trying to think, there's another one that I'm trying to think of, oh, this one's deep. Um, Unfortunately, I have had clients over the years that have lost loved ones to murder. I have had that, where I've been in session with someone and the mediumship piece is murder. Um, and I've talked to murderers and I've talked to victims of murder and in session, their families, you know. And so when I was channeling this woman, she died in a domestic violence setting and it was awful it was on the news and all that it was awful it was the scene was like nothing i've ever seen i i can't I, not even in like a horror movie i mean i don't watch scary movies you could probably bet i don't do that right but i i It was, and I had to maintain my composure because I was talking with two members of the family and I was just so, I was like, uh, I, I, I mean, they said, we know, we know how bad it was. I'm like, oh, and I did share a few of the details with them so they knew that I was actually seeing and that I knew what was going on here. And the mom said, Thank you. Thank you. For being willing to share what I was seeing, you know. It was so bad. Wow, here I'm like going to cry. I don't want to cry. Oh, I'm so sensitive. And that's a good thing, right? So in regards to channeling, those are just some examples of some of the strange and creepy and... Uh, things that I've had to um, mediumship wise work with. I have had clients that I've talked to over the years in specifically doing mediumship where some of the people that have crossed over were not good people, like people that inflicted abuse, whether it be sexual abuse or physical abuse, trauma on, on the person who is having the session. And sometimes, and there's a natural, a very real fear and a natural fear, I think that in the session, that person will show up and they'll be the same. And I don't think I've ever, I'm trying to recall if I've ever actually had a session where the person was the same. I don't think I have, where they actually showed up like that. And they could understand, I could understand why there was a fear about that, but, but I'm like, you're safe. You're so safe. You're totally safe. This isn't, you don't have to forgive this person. You don't have to relive any of this stuff. You don't have to give this person anything. You don't have to accept anything from this person, but this is your time to speak your piece if you want to do that. And so I've done that as well in mediumship sessions that I've done in the past. Now, the crux of my work right now at this time is not that. It's not mediumship. Um, at this time, I'm focused more on psychic life coaching and empowering the spirit of women to awaken to their spirit and to work with the gifts that you've already been given in this lifetime to live your best life. So that's kind of been my focus recently, but I do mediumship from time to time. We'll see. We'll see if it comes in again at some point maybe, but there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of healing that can be done through that process, but that's just the start. Usually that's just a session once, you know, that's not like a, I don't get to talk to those people over and over again. And, and I, I need that in my work. I need that relationship. I need to know that, that that person, that family is on a healing journey and that they're, they're better. They're taking this information from their, their session and they're using it as a jumping off point to make their lives better, to take their life back, to get empowered, to breathe again, to begin again. You know, I need to know that. And I also then can help with that process. So... So those are some things. Um, I'm gonna to talk to you in this series then also about some creepy places I've been. So 
keep a watch for that video as well. This is Bridget, thanks so much for watching. Before you leave, by the way, take a moment to subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new video. If you're watching for me on social media, you can find me at Bridget Inspired on Facebook, Above Life channel on Facebook, and Bridget Inspired on Instagram. I also have two YouTube channels, Above Life channel on YouTube, and Fairy Grasshopper channel as well.